begin transmission. <laughs> begin. Part two can read episode three. You could even the box you would get good money. Oh it's what's your like Ken, what's your like most prized And keep in mind I'm possession. on the ET Atari commercial uh, in the middle of Alabama. That is true. Oh! That's true. Have you you've seen the documentary? Yes, it's great. Yeah. Zach Penn never asked if he could use my face. Oh, jeez. I have noticed on like the Transformers DVDs and stuff, they've included the commercials and blurred out all the kids' faces. <laughs> so it's like the full commercial. I think Hunter's in one of them. His face is all blurred out. Yeah, Transformers yeah, yeah, commercial? Yeah, yeah. Um, my most prized thing. That's tough. Actually, I have some... You know it doesn't what I have? have to be movie-related. Yeah. It could be just like, what is what is something that, like, there's no way I'm ever getting rid of this. Like, like, the house is on fire, I'm going to grab this yes, after I get out I of have, people like, up. I've, I've minimized my life down to, like, you know, just a small apartment you know, yeah. like, where I don't really need... I really don't need anything that's in my apartment. I probably have, like, a guitar that I might grab because it's probably worth some money but it's not that important to me right it's not uh, a sentimental no design. no no there's like a few items I, I probably would never mention on air that i might not that i might grab but like is there something that you've collected over the years or something that you just might yes yes the it, and it is movie related i have the first vhs tape we ever rented so when we moved to <laughs> we moved to our house in 1983 no so it's a weird story so we 1983, we moved to our the house in the suburbs that we had. We went to the local video store and we rented Dawn of the Dead. The 1978 Dawn of the Dead. Yep. First movie I ever watched on a VCR. Wow. Fast forward, I think about almost 20 years later, that video store is called Video Gallery. Mm -hmm. They're going out of business mm -hmm. and they're selling all their inventory. And they have the tape, the actual tape, the first tape we ever rented. Wow. And I bought it for a dollar and I have that tape. Oh, it's wow. the actual one, it's the still first the one. Same. It's the same exact copy. It's that copy. Wow. And that, that's a really cool thing that is of like. How do you know, wait, how do you know it's the exact same copy? Because it's the, it's, uh, the box, it was in a cut box. It's the from '78. Mm -hmm. As the they never replaced it. Okay, and so they I think go, we were the they only, yeah, it. yeah. It was a little video, like mom and pop video store. That's really cool, um, and it's a very little monetary value, but it's a thing that I'm like, this no, is that's amazing. what I meant. Yeah, like, something yeah. that is sentimental to <clears throat> you, yeah. but doesn't necessarily like I wouldn't want it. The other cool I might thing kill you, you I might, might, you might stab you for it. Yeah, so that's like, fine. Just because I like yeah. the film. But it's like, a good I don't film. Know, I yeah. have a VCR, but I still yeah. might stab you. Well, you just hold it up to the light. I do you know Dave Stevens is. Uh, no. <laughs> he used to be uh, married to Brink Stevens, the uh, Scream oh, Queen. Yeah. But he was a pinup artist. He's the one who's basically responsible for introducing Betty Page to everybody okay. in the 80s. He created the Rocketeer. Oh, yeah. And um, okay. cool. amazing artist. He died a few years ago, and they were selling his library um, on eBay or something. So I managed to get his reference books for old jukeboxes and old um, televisions mm -hmm. that he had in his personal library for reference for Rocketeer stuff with his notes in them oh, wow. for uh, a, a shockingly low price. And having those is really cool because they're like actual yeah, items the person right. used. So that that I uh, wow. that I really like. Did you ever watch that show Comic Book Man? Yes, yeah. I love that show. I mean, I just love the guys. Yeah. Like, it's just it's one of those like just guilty pleasures just to yeah. quickly watch something like in between like watching something Thing like it's like heavy and like yeah it's like a sorbet special. Yeah. it's a tv sorbet it's, it's a little tv sorbet and I, I i like the guys i think they're cool but like every once in a while some guy will come in with like oh what yeah you don't even know you yeah, have well how did you get this yeah. Where, well i my uncle was friends with so and so and the, the artist gave him these like oh original yeah, these ninja turtles <laughs> black and whites or whatever so like and and you know they're like oh, and he's like how much you want you know how you know, how much you want for them? And the guy's like, I, I was thinking like, you know, 20 grand. Yeah. And the guys are like, <laughs> yeah. thanks for bringing them in. Yeah. Love, I loved looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The people overvalue everything. It's crazy. It's whatever anyone will pay for them. Well, it was funny. We were watching, walking around that store today. Yeah. And, um, you know, while you were doing your comedy, I was like wandering around. Yeah. With your was, with your fingers in your ears. Yeah. Because I was yeah. bored as hell. Yeah. So I was. Uh, <laughs> no, I was no, standing there. I, <laughs> I was riveted. Um, great story, by the way. Oh, I, I won't. I, I mean, it's material, so you know, I, don't, I won't make you do your material on, on the podcast. But um, uh, some of those items where I just like, 
I'm like, oh, I had that. Oh, look, it's a land speeder out of the box. Yeah. Four hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, that, wait, what? That's yeah. why I, I have this, that. This I fucking have, ship yeah. that doesn't exist. I, yeah. I have that Pull somewhere. Pull my hair out. Like, yeah. I have that somewhere. Yeah, it's oh. crazy. What uh, you know, and it's and it's we're at the age now too. That, I started like going through. Sorry, not to interrupt oh, no, you, no, but no. like I was like, I literally had a like a, a, an imaginary box. Adding in up. My, in my <laughs> right. no, going, put that in the box. Yep. Put right. that in the box. Yep. Bring that box to this store. Even if I get and a sell this whole that. box. Yeah. Even at like I'm looking at like a, yeah. a f- Star Wars figures out of the out of the case. Yeah. Um, no card. Um, right. I don't even know the terms of this kind. The of original loop, but, but with have, the lightsaber yeah. that I've comes out of the bags, arm that's broken. I've got bags of, of, of Star Wars figures. Yeah. And like, yeah, like I saw Obi Wan without the plastic robe, no the, lightsaber, no for twenty five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I think, have the lightsaber. I think I hit the lightsabers in, in there yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not the robe, but the lightsabers in there. I think I might even have a full Darth Vader with robe and thing. Yeah. And like, I looked at it, and like he. <laughs> okay, first of all, have you ever seen a Darth Vader original With, action figure without the robe? Yes. Yeah. It's just this skinny, naked thing. Yeah, he's all like, it's hey, so like, weird hey, looking. Yeah. It's just this like disgusting anorexic <laughs> monster. He's yeah. in a jumpsuit. Yeah, he's, it's like a, it's like a Grace Jones outfit. Like it looks like oh something she'd perform. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm not gonna sleep tonight. <laughs> Grace Jones is coming out of the closet. If, Ga- if Grace, no, the real closet, the real not the closet closet. closet but if Grace no Jones cloak. played Darth Vader, I would be really into Star Wars. Oh my god! Could you imagine if that helmet would have came off and it was her? Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Have you, ever seen the movie, have you ever seen the movie Vamp? That yeah. yeah. That when you were talking about like dirty LA, uh, that movie's like that's what creepy dirty LA looks like to me. Where it's still like weird candy colored neon, but like weirdly eighties weird. Yeah, ca- yeah that's yeah. definitely what it was. Uh, there, there's another good movie, and I I think I kind of remember the story I was thinking about earlier. But then I know there was a segue we want to talk about earlier. But there's a there's a great this is a shameless plug for a friend of mine's movie. But if we're talking about LA being a character and a yeah. drop back. Uh, a, a buddy of mine named Dennis Hauk did uh, a, a movie called Too Late. And I, mm. I, I, I took Ryan yeah, to it. Yeah, it was amazing. And it's, it stars John Hawks, mm-hmm. who's a great actor. But he, in today's age of filmmaking, he kind of went retro and double indied up on his double down by doing it's a movie in five chapters. They're not in sequence. And he shot it on film, too. He right? shot it on film. Yeah, we, I think we talked about yeah, this, yeah. right? Uh, well, I just saw him the other day, so it reminded me. But it, uh, he, they're not in sequence. Shot it on 35 millimeter film, and each scene is one reel of film, one take. Right. So that's not really easy to do. And I really liked the movie. And it was like festival here, and I took Ryan, and Ryan was like, yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Because it managed... it's so different. Yeah. And then, of course, they just did, like, he festivaled it all year, and they just did an SVOD deal. Yeah. And you're like, uh, Ouch! Yeah. I, like I'm like no, but that's a win because you're a yeah. filmmaker, and he's like, yeah. I, I mean, how long can I do the? But twenty years ago, that would have got a Miramax release to small theater, and probably a fucking yeah. award, at like yeah. like the Indie Award or something, because yeah. it was that good. Yeah. And there's some names, and John Hawks is like that character actor's a little like, wait, I've seen that guy in a million things, right. but I'm seeing him in every shot right. here. Why don't I see him in every shot? So. Kudos to Dennis Haugen. That's it because it's a good movie. It's called Too Late. Yeah. If you get to see it, go watch it. Oh, but I love... imagine it in thirty five. It's a. Yeah. Ma- it's. Re- I like... just saw John Hawks on. I want to say. Buffy. You... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not even joking. Wait, it was something. God, it was because I've been. I'm on. I, I'm. I'm uh, back on Buffy. Uh, I'm, I'm on season three, episode twelve, right now. Um, this is my like third, the seventh third, third incantation of you watching. Round, just third round. Original, then I watch it again, now I'm watching it. You don't go like time. Angel and like Tertiary. So the second time I... so He plays Angel while he's sleeping. The yeah. first time I watched Buffy, uh, I watched... Then Angel came on and I watched that. And the second time I watched it, I watched Buffy, and then when I knew Angel started, I started watching Angel and then at the same time. Yeah. So I so it would go back and forth, knowing that like Buffy came to this Angel episode at this particular right. time. This time, I'm not watching Angel. Yeah, that seems complicated <laughs> because I'm watching it late at night. Right. I, I remember. just remembered. I think what I was trying to talk about because you had mentioned we rewinding about sitting around on sets and hanging out, and you're just on this lit set and you're hanging out. 
it's my story because when Gene Wilder died last oh, yes. week or the week yeah. before, right? I think I told you the story. Yeah, yeah. And you may know the story too, but it, <laughs> you're sitting around a set, and this is weird to other people, but it's every day to if you're on a show. But it's Conrad Bain, George C. Scott, Maddie Corman, who's a great... She played my older sister, and she was like 18 at the time, and she was in New York. She's great. And me, and then this guy named Alan Williams, who's a character actor, but was also the script supervisor on our show. Or, sorry, the dialogue coach, but also had a role in the show. Double duty. And then I think it might have been an episode that Eugene Roach was on, who is phenomenally funny. And we're all just sitting around waiting for something to happen on a Wednesday afternoon. I have no idea how this subject comes up, but Madeline Kahn is talking about circumcisions. <laughs> and of course, being the 14-year-old boy on this set with someone like Madeline Kahn, and this is the topic, it's not the most comfortable afternoon you yeah. can have. But she's sitting around talking about it, and she's, <laughs> she's like... I just don't, I just don't get it. I just don't understand why they do that anymore. I just, I just, I think it's bad. I think it's wrong. And this is my bad Madeline Connor. I think it's a pretty good Madeline Connor. And it's, it's getting there. I, uh, I just, <laughs> I just, I just, <laughs> I'm darling, I just, yeah. she, I, it's, I, she goes, I just, I, I just, I just don't understand why they do that. And frankly, I just think they're, they're, I just think they're ugly. And without missing a beat, she says, I just, I just think they're ugly. Pats me on the knee and goes, no offense, dear. <laughs> and then starts talking again. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, Madeline Kahn just singled me out and my dong yeah. in front of all these people. Again. And I'm the only one that's under 50 in this set, so I'm the only one she's talking about. Again, sounds like a weird and dream. It seems like a weird dream. Yeah. So yeah. Madeline Kahn's telling George C. Scott about, about, my, about, about my dog. About my dog. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, isn't this a good thing? But then... Uh, Except couple... she just does it with her elbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, and she, just, she just moved right on to the next sentence. And I was almost mortified and petrified. But I kind of played it off a little bit. And I was like, mm, yeah, no problem. But then with the Gene Wilder thing and seeing her face again, you know, since she's gone now, I was like... If I had only been as punny as right. I thought I was, and turned to her and said, I'm... "It's true, it's true," <laughs> I would have been an instant fucking comedy legend. Yeah, in front of all of these famous people, I'm gonna just drop it. It would have been the one yeah. and only time George C. Scott high five somebody. <laughs> uh, it might have been. <laughs> and Madeline Kahn, if I had said that, she would have gone, "What?" Oh, and just like fell on the couch and been like, "Oh, dear, I'm gonna be good." Because people think Madeline Kahn, when she's acting, that's like her shit. That's how Madeline Kahn is. She's a whole different ball of energy. It's like she's she's like this wound up Tesla coil of funny. Here's the magic just, of time. It's bad that those people are gone now. Oh. But because they are, the story can happen the way you want it to happen. <laughs> like, wait, let's rewind and re-edit this and go, so when I was 14, I came up with this great company. Conrad Bain's not going to be like, bullshit. <laughs> no, he's not. I was Damn there. It. So I'm yeah. banging Madeline Kahn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. And then I'm 10 I wake, years old. I wake up from a nap Madeline in Ron Kahn. Howard's dressing room. It reminds me of a similar story happened to me. I was with Terry Gar and oh, Wilford Brimley. And I, <laughs> and I put the candle back. <laughs> Alright, alright. Let's, uh, let's oh, not even wait. segue. Let's go... I want to go to Boston. Okay. Or the Why? Boston area. Yeah. Why? And I want to... <laughs> <laughs> I want to know about... The Wahlbergs? What is happening in this town. Yeah. Comedy-wise, film-wise. Okay. Is there anything... Is there a good film commission? Is there like a shooting there? So they, What's the comedy yeah. scene? Is it like here where it's like all comedy underground, comic book shop, blah, blah, blah? Uh, or are there actually, I know there's very great comedy. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it ebbs and flows comedies. there. So like Boston, everyone that is comedy now, that, that creates the comedy everybody loves, has a connection to Boston at the moment. So like if you look at, 
um, there was a thing called Catch a Rising Star in yeah. Cambridge that was part of that franchise. Huge. The people who started at that one in Cambridge in the late 80s was David Cross, Mark Maron, Sarah Silverman, Jonathan Katz, Louis C.K. Yeah. It's literally everybody who's like comedy now. Um, and before that was the sort of very 80s Boston scene that people think of with like Letty Clark and uh, Steve Sweeney and the guys who are more like this fucking guy. Yeah. He's a, like that kind of stuff. That shifted a little bit in the 90s. Things kind of died. We had guys like Dane Cook and Bill Burr who, who came out here. Love and then Bill, in the, Burr. Bill Burr's fantastic. And then the early 2000s, the scene at the comedy studio where I started in Boston was like Jen Kirkman, Eugene Merman, um, Brendan Small, and all those guys. After they all kind of left, not a ton has happened since then. Uh, a lot of the clubs are still there, but people kind of uh, leave before they kind of make a mark on Boston, either come here or go to New York. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> like, the people I started with were, like, Mike Kaplan, Shane Moss, mm -hmm. Jenny Zagrino, mm -hmm. Josh Gondelman, like, like, people like that. There's still a lot of comics around, but there's Those not, all sound like, like ailments. Yeah, they are. Every single one of them is a foot disease. A Josh uh, Gondelman. What, yeah. what a Josh, Josh Gondelman. Gondelman yeah. Josh Gondelman. Yeah. Sounds like something yeah. I need a salve yeah. or a cream for. He's a right around I'm just down. kidding. That's a good guy. No, he is. He's disgusting. He's an <laughs> absolute monster of a human being. But he writes for, like, John Oliver now. He's, like, a big But if you Twitter want me to be on your show, I'm available. Yes, he'll do it. Um, yeah. No, I'm available. Yes. Not you. I'm no, available. I said he'll do it. I'm his agent now. I won't even take money. Um, so there, I'll give you 10%. Oh, excellent. Uh, there's a bunch of people still doing stuff, but no like core right. club or scene. It's kind of very spread out. Uh, but that stuff's all very cyclical. There's Boston has a film festival and like a, a, a kind of a weak local film scene, mm -hmm. but they are still doing a ton of it's money. It's Ted and Ted 2. Ted and Ted 2. <laughs> they shoot, they're shooting stuff there all the time. And they just shot the movie about the um, marathon bombing there. Yeah. That, that Mark Wahlberg's doing, but it, it's completely explained. And he would show up unannounced at a lot of these like events for the victims and be like, yo, someone's going to do it. They're going to do a bad job. I'm doing it. I'm going to make it good. Yeah. But I'm like, eh. You, uh, <clears throat> continue, because you have to tell me. We have to get into this story because you were telling me oh, the, the other day. Oh, the driving work story? About back in the early 90s when. Mark Wahlberg was, they were trying to make oh, Mark Wahlberg yeah. a yeah. This is like, because you and I were reminiscing about the days of New Kids on the Block, and when we were here, and I used to hang out with New Kids on the Block yeah, when yeah. they were in LA, and we were friends with them, and it was sort of that thing, but Mark was his brother's roadie. Yeah, because he and had been in And that's where I met Mark Wahlberg, because he was like, Getting the shit off the bus. Take your brother. Let him let him lift stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Give him a job. It's yeah. good. But like, so we're hanging out with the guys, and then like, I met Mark Warburg. But is then it like, their mother telling them all what to do. Yeah, <laughs> she does. Yeah. She's still, 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 still. still. Yeah. Mom, go make yeah. some hamburgers. <laughs> Take your brother, <laughs> make a hamburger. <laughs> but what is it with the showbiz families if they have more than three kids? One of them's a chef. <laughs> like they have to have at least one chef. That's funny. It's yeah. not a chef. It's a cook. A cook. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, but it's every single a one. line the cook. The Murray brothers, the Wahlberg <laughs> brothers. They all have the one chef brother. But we, you were telling me the other day that. Even back when Mark was, then they did the Marky Mark thing. Yeah, the Funky Bunch. That everywhere you went at home, you're like, I'm going to the Bake yeah, Off. The on the, and yeah. like, all of a sudden there's a free fucking Marky yeah. Mark show. They tried and to they break, were pushing yeah. it on you. It was like the post-Tiffany world where they were like, we're going to break them in the malls, do it locally. Yeah. So you literally couldn't go anywhere without a free Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch <laughs> concert breaking out on the night. <laughs> And it became a punchline everywhere you'd go. Like, someone would be like, oh, well, what are we so long for? What did fucking Maki Mak end up playing for an hour? And, like, half the time the answer was yes. yes. Like, you'd be going to buy shoes. And I'm just like, trying to get some fucking Reeboks. Yeah. And I got to listen to the same like, song for a night. It's blocked off. Here comes Marky Mark and the Funk. And they'd play all the time. And there was this local morning show for kids called Ready to Go. It was on Every Day Before School. And, like, new kids got their break on that. They, they played locally. Uh, Jordan taught everyone how to do the fly dance. <laughs> and so they, the first televised appearance was Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Uh, and they're playing for literally like eight-year-olds. And he's got in his underwear and he's all like, oh, yo, yeah. yo. So he pulls this girl out of the line. She's literally eight years old. And he goes, yo, you got a man? And she goes, no. And he goes, don't ever let a man play you. <laughs> so funny enough. Oh, and a couple years ago, I find the clip of that. Uh, and I post it online. 
And this girl that I grew up with goes, that's me. And I remember she goes, we all went there for this girl's birthday. And she goes, I totally forgot this happened. And that it's Marky Mark. It's Mark Wahlberg. How do you forget go, that? I know. Happened. And I go, did he say, don't ever let a man play? She's like, yes. Yes. That is what he told me. Which is good advice. But it was, yeah, you couldn't go anywhere with that. And now he's $10 million a yeah. picture. Yeah. You, it was everywhere. Every single and time. funny as hell. Yeah, he, you ever seen him on the Graham Norton show and he gets a little drunk and he goes on this? I, 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 he's not as funny as Ryan Lambert when he gets. No, it's not. But he goes on this thing. He goes. Andre Gower can't remember a damn thing with two, two, two sips of Jameson. Yeah. He goes. I ah, shouldn't have it. a career. I shouldn't have a career. That's not right. I was an asshole. He's yeah. like, I was a stupid kid. I shouldn't be allowed to do this. I've heard him say that. It's really funny. Yeah. Like, yeah, None true. of us should be able to do. Not, not that I am doing. Have it you right ever now, blinded an Asian I'm man? Just... <laughs> <laughs> he did. <laughs> But I mean, is he okay? Everybody likes to. I mean, if we're if, if someone wants to clown Mark Wahlberg, but is yeah. he actually a genuinely okay guy? I mean, I've never I've never really met him or talked about. I've met him briefly when he was literally his yeah. his brother's like. I, I've always thought those were like fairly decent guys. There's such there's such a um a Boston archetype of that guy. Like everybody. Yeah, so how, I mean, how true is that? I mean, that's that's, that's how fucking, those guys are. Yeah, like, yeah that's Goodwill Hunting. Playing and, uh, that guy, or is he is that guy? I think it's a mixture of both. I think because they, like someone like Matt Damon is playing that guy. Yeah, Matt Damon's uh, from a very wealthy, well-to-do Cambridge right. family. And I, yeah, I, the I personally think not. Matt Damon right. is my Matt Damon is one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, at, as far as like major studio actors right now. Yeah, I think he's genuine. I think he's great, and I think he has a great family, and like I think he. Uh, makes really good choices with uh, indie films and, yeah, with, yeah. and his mixture of like indie and like making money films. Uh, make money for my family. He's and an then Upper I do West stuff Side for guy. Okay. If it's ba- if it's I New like York. that. So what I'm saying is the like, Wahlbergs are Brooklyn guys. Got it. And that's yeah. how they are for for Boston. Got it. Like um, you know the band Letters to Cleo. Yeah. Uh, Kay Hanley literally in Dorchester grew up across the street from the Wahlbergs. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was on a, she was on a set doing something, and Donnie Wahlberg was shooting something, and they ran into each other. Haven't seen each other for a long time. We're just like. How is this a thing? Like, we grew up in a how, studio. How does this happen? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's but awesome. everyone who grew up in that area has, like, a Wahlberg Brothers story of them, like, just being, like, causing trouble. Like, a friend of mine was like, you never wanted them to come to your party. Uh, Mark, <laughs> he would always, this thing he would do when there was a party with a ton of people in the room, he'd crank the heat up as high as it would go, and then they'd leave, and no one would notice for, like, another hour or two of people are drinking, and it's, like, 112 degrees in there. And then he would just, like, that was, like, a thing he did for fun. Uh, so it's like they're just like we like typical just like big Boston family people, yeah. uh, but I've never heard of them doing anything like horrific or bad or being like bad guys. No, I think it's actually st- I mean it's a family thing and they kind of yeah. stay tight and yeah, it doesn't seem like it's disingenuous. Now, no, they right? just seem like you're just like you're like literally all the guys my uncles hung out with. You know, like, right. I'm just like, and it's always like, why, yeah, how why why are we how are we doing this? This is, yeah. this shouldn't happen. No, it really is bizarre. This really shouldn't. It happen. really is bizarre that that those guys are. It's, it's and it really all is because, correct me if I'm wrong, but Donnie went to like an open fucking audition for a boy band yeah. and got cast as one of five out of probably 300 kids that went to that thing. You'd be surprised. There was probably not as many kids who went to that because Boston at that time, if they were like, hey, you guys want to be in like white new edition? They'd be like, go fuck yourself. Like well, they okay, would not okay. do Now it. if it was in Orlando, yeah, that would have been different. Yeah. There would have been 3,000 kids. Boston would be kids. like, back okay. off. Like there was a lot of kids who probably wouldn't So maybe that. he was... Cutting edge and said, "Hey, yeah. I'm, I have some foresight." Well, they had for that because I like yeah, Donnie Wahlberg. They had Jordan <laughs> and and um and Joey McIntyre. That was the group, and then they built them the rest of the guys around it. And Jordan got his brother in, and and then Donnie Wahlberg auditioned and got in. But it was like a really weird um thing, and they would play everywhere as well before they broke. Yeah, you had right. Everywhere, but of course they had the Adidas thing too because we had yeah. the Adidas thing coming off of Monster Squad where you just get Adidas shit free. Yeah, and then like you see yourself wearing the same like gigantic gaudy Shell suede tons. sweatshirt. <laughs> yeah, that Jordan Knight's wearing. And yeah. you're like, wait, what? I thought that was our thing, man. I thought that was my yeah. suede tank top. Well, that's why they didn't. That's why they didn't make a Monster Squad sequel starring New Kids on the Block. <laughs> oh, oh my God, maybe that's the sequel. I maybe would see we, that. Maybe I would we. See that. Can we team up with NKTO, NKTOB the versus monster Godzilla? Monster. <laughs> <laughs> I one time sat down and counted how many times they say girl in Step by Step. It's many, less than you'd think. 
Okay. What is it? 17. I was going to say 13. Yeah. Okay. Because Jordan fits in a bunch that f- feel like he wasn't supposed to. Like, he's just trying to get him in this part. He goes, step by step, girl. Like, he just kind of fits <laughs> it in before <laughs> it's over. It yeah, yeah, yeah. What year was what year was this whole thing? Because, like, I, 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 this might have been, like, when I was, like, trying to, like, slip out of, like, the whole... No, that's exactly like, when you were kind of sliding off being cool yeah, and having, like, a purple they fucking did, mohawk yeah. or dreads or something, yeah. whatever the Right, so, like, what year was... This was, like, poppy 80, hip-hop. 87 is when yeah. they kind of came yeah, forward with so, their first single. 89, 90 was, like, their biggest year. When they came to L.A. and I hung them, that was, like, 89. Yeah. So, 90. my son was born in 91, and I already had, like, you know, like, long hair and... Yeah. And, and yeah, you were not. You were not a right guy. You would go fuck You weren't listening yeah. to tonight by now. I, I knew it was happening, but like I wasn't around anybody. Like not one person that knew. You weren't even around me. Like it's like, like we weren't even no, like no, hanging no. out that time. No, yeah. no, not at all. Like yeah. I didn't know anybody that knew anything about them. I knew that it was happening, and like you know, MTV still played music videos, and yeah. I was still on. Oh, the and good I, old like, days. I would, wouldn't listen to it, but like. Um, I, I I don't know any of these songs, and it, it always freaks me out when I see like pillowcases and like oh, vintage merchant. shops and things like that. I'm like, yeah. the hell? <laughs> yeah, and, like girl, like girls that I knew then, uh, talking about it now. Yeah. Going like, oh my god, and like you know, masturbating. Yeah. Oh, they melt over. And, and I'm like, yeah. wait, 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 wait. What, what was this? I don't remember. Because like the girl I was with, like having a child with, she didn't like that, or none yeah. of the people I was with liked that shit. Yeah, but, like, but you had girls melt over you because you were on Kids Inc. Yeah, but that was like f- ten years before. No, that. it wasn't that long. Ago. <laughs> it wasn't like was that long. It was like four years. years. Yeah. No, no. Wasn't no, that? No, yes, no. yes, yes, yes. You started in 85, 85, 86. 83, 84, I think it was 84. It it's not that. It's not the that first long season long. was 83, 84, thing. but that was. It's the that. same dynamic, my man. Well, you know what? Own it. I'll tell you right now. We got screwed. Because of, the, I mean, it it, ha- it it all happened right after Kids Inc. ended for me. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Like that should have been like, thank God. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> let me just say right off the bat, thank fucking. Yeah. Well, I don't you know. Don't you want to do well, wait, I could no. I could be living in your guest house right now, so it'd be great. Right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> your gigantic Hancock Park house. I'd have the. Four thousand foot tried. guest house they in the back. They tried. Hey, not for lack of trying. Believe me, they tried. I, they I know that. I know that story. Real hard. Bop magazine tried real hard to make all that <laughs> make all that a reality. But yeah, I, all that happened like after. Then I was just like, I'm out. Yeah. Like I don't want to do this anymore. I've got a whole nother. Well, you, life. Do, you were doing music, music, yeah, I was not like, I not was pop trying, track and recording shit. Yeah, I wanted to be in a punk band and like you know forget all like leave all that shit behind. Yeah. But uh, so I don't know from all this. So like when you guys talk about these songs, like baby, 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 how many yeah. songs? I, I I wasn't listening to all that shit. No, it's it's uh, hey. Cover Girl. <laughs> the the anti Cover Girl brothers Cigarette, from yeah. Massachusetts at that time was Rob Zombie and his brother Spider <laughs> okay. from Power yes. Man Five Thousand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was like the that was like the Dark Matter uh, Wahlberg brothers whose rise was. What was uh, your become... musical taste when you were like a I little was, kid? Like, little kid, I was into uh, a lot of like freestyle like dance music stuff, yeah. and then like punk rock was from me. Age, like when I was four or five years old, I started watching Night Flight and saw the young ones. Right. Oh, and God. so One that's of my favorite shows ever. Your original question of who was like the biggest thing I had on the show was I had the damned on. Oh, and oh my the God. damned absolutely changed my life. I saw them on the young ones, and I and it was that moment when I went, I don't know what this is, but this is everything I like. <laughs> and it was when you discover the thing that you like, and it was just amazing. And I talked to Dave Vanian for like hours about oh about, and he never does interviews. I don't know about his dad and like horror movies and all this stuff. And got this. He was telling me how the, all these movies they had written music for that never came out. But at the same time, the most difficult person I had was uh, maybe not the most difficult, but up there was Captain Sensible from The Damned, oh. who is a really <laughs> interesting guy, but very seventies British punk rock guy, and he's the only guy that ended an interview with me in ten minutes because he was like, I, I, I hate TV, and I'm like, well, that's interesting. Let's talk about that. And so he had some good points, and then uh, he had referenced a bunch of sci-fi movies like Phantom of the Paradise and stuff like that Ooh. from the stage. Yeah. So I was like, you know, you referenced The Prisoner and this thing. Did you watch that stuff? And he looks at me and he goes. The, I'm terminating the interview and just, that walked was out. and just walked out and I was like, 
I don't know what I did wrong. And obviously, you know, I felt like I screwed up and I'm the worst person ever. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, I only have 10 minutes. I can't release that. I'm like, I got to talk to these guys. He's in the so, damn. That's what you did yeah, wrong. Yeah. He's, he's in the damn. Yeah, yeah, you exactly, did wrong. Yeah. <laughs> he um, can do whatever yeah, the fuck I know, he wants yeah. to do. <laughs> and so Dave was, and everyone's like, Dave never does interviews. He's very aloof. And first of all, he gets off stage. They put an amazing show. I've seen them a bunch of times. It's the best I've ever seen them. They did this on Nasty from the Young Ones, and I got mm -hmm. dedicated, <laughs> which oh. I was like, no, do, I, am I this, do I have a terminal illness I don't know about? <laughs> and uh, so Dave gets off stage, three piece suit, top coat, black gloves, gets in the shower, like clears, cleans up the bathroom, gets out, puts a different suit on. That's hilarious. He had like a hanging out suit. So he's just like <laughs> sitting there and he's like drinking Why? a glass of wine. So I'm like, you know what? I'm hearing him. I'm like, hey, Dave, can I talk to you about old TV? He's like, absolutely. And we talked for a really long time and I got this great episode out of it. And people who are Dan fans were like, that's the longest interview I've ever with Dave and like would listen to the show. That I think was the, that was the one where I was like, this is crazy. Like this cool. is absolutely crazy. Since you just asked about music, since we're like, you know, TV guide-esque and, and retro TV. Um, if you had to, do you have favorite shows from eras or decades? Like, what's your, if you had to pick, if you were on a, if you had to go to a trip to Mars. Right. And you can only take one show from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Ooh, tough. Would that be tough? Or, <laughs> it, I'll give you two. Okay. From each decade. I'm going to go 50s, 60s. 70s, 80s, 90s. Okay, let's go there. Like, okay, so I if you can go all the way back. The okay. yeah. That's so <laughs> I'm going to make it real hard. Okay. So 50s, I'm going to take um, probably Ernie Kovacs. Nice. Um, and that's my only choice, 50s. 60s is tough, but I think I'll go Twilight Zone and Car 54, Where Are You? Wow. R54. So, favorite sitcom, perfect sitcom. That it's so modern, like it's Kirby Enthusiasm. Is Car 54 where are you? The way that show is written, it's like the way the stuff builds. Perfect. Interesting. 70s, I'm gonna go with um, Barney Miller. And good show. Um, Barney Miller, good show. When, when sitcom. Barney Miller and I'll go. I didn't SCTV. say and. I said favorite oh. show. Oh, he gave uh, me two. <laughs> oh, you gave you. I gave him two. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. Give no, no, two. I gave him two. Okay, so two, two. For me. and then you went back. So two yeah. from each. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we'll Barney that. Miller would be the number one. Okay, Something right. would be SCTV for seventies. Oh. Eighties wow. is a tough one. Eighties, I'm gonna go. Uh, Spencer for Hire, because I rewatch it often. <laughs> Never seen one episode. And Newhart. Oh. 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 Good pick. Yeah. Nice. And I had, damn, back to your, Bobby did I tell you the Peter Scolari story that I had Julia Duffy on the show? Oh, and she, she said, was so funny on that show. She's so funny. And she's oh my God. Sweetheart. She's so funny. And she said when Peter Scolari came in season two and they were at the first table read and he's reading his part and Bob Newhart out loud, really loud so everyone can hear it turns it to the producer and goes, I wanted the other guy from Bosom Buddies. <laughs> and then he was like, what? And then he's like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God, that's his so funny. First day on set. It's the first thing he says to him. Uh, so I'd definitely go with that. 90s, Adventures of Pete and Pete. Whoa. And, Whoa. Yeah. Uh, incredible show. I know show. someone whose favorite, I, that she loves that show. It's such a good show. Okay. And, and Adventures of Pete and Pete, and who else? My or what else? So-Called Life. Wow. Yeah, that makes sense for 90s. you. That, yeah, that makes sense. That's for what you. I go with for yeah, 90s. Yeah, that's yeah, for Who's that guy? Jared Leto. Yeah, Jared, Jared Leto. Leto. Was Leto. 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 Who's that guy? After. Yeah. Oh, you think he's done a bunch of other stuff, other right? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> fucking <laughs> DiCaprio. <laughs> Whatever. I think I'm gonna go with Ots. I'm gonna go with Fringe, and I'm gonna go Fringe. Yeah, Ooh. my favorite oh, sci-fi show of all time. About that. Yeah, okay. it's fantastic. Fringe and Fringe, and I will go with. Oh, that's tough. Fringe and Freaks and Geeks. Nice. That's good. Okay. And as we come to now... Now is tough. Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Grocery Comes days. full circle. <laughs> Comes full circle. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know what I'd pick current. What are you watching currently? So I watched Just Stranger two. Things and loved it. I, okay, I would, okay, I would we take that. We don't talk about that. Would, you podcast. know, that doesn't exist. Um... <laughs> I watch for conscious. I love the new Tick, which I hope they do a full series of. You've seen it, yeah? They I just, have not watched. It's really good. When did when did it start airing? Um, so they did what they did a pilot on Amazon. They're okay. doing a contest to see which pilot goes through. Yeah, so I know they do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, we know they. We, do we, that. Yeah, we we yeah, um, we know a couple guys that yeah. do the show there. And uh, yeah. I, I've tried to get. Like, hey, so they may uh, or may not uh, do the rest of the series. But so you watch one episode and you like that. That's one of your choices. I have for some this insight. Era? Yeah, because so I had, I had Ben Edlund on the show 
and it was right when he was starting doing it, and I was privy to plans for the season. Not Mr. Robot, not like... I haven't I, seen Mr. Robot. Yeah. I'm, I'm, kind of getting, I'm, kind of, I'm getting a, a vibe from you that you don't watch, like... These like huge HBO no. show. Yeah, I've never anything. seen The Wire. I've never seen okay, you don't Breaking like Bad. I've like, never no, seen Game of Thrones. You. No, I'm, I'm with, with you there too. Yeah, There's two this things. This isn't you. This isn't you. I, I actually I want to watch The Wire because I've never seen yeah. an episode of The Wire, but I want to watch it and sit and, and enjoy yeah. it. I, I intend know it's, to it's good. someday. Yeah, but I just Why? never. It doesn't have. sound like your kind of thing. Like as I'm listening to you tell me each era, era, you're not saying anything that would ever pertain to anything that would. Like be Breaking Bad or uh, maybe for, for TV no, but for movies yes. And I feel like now Ooh, our television. See now we could go to a whole nother yes. thing. But now is that a whole other episode? Probably yeah. That's a whole because okay, I feel yeah. like television. Television, television now the quality of television now is much more influenced by movies than it is by old television. I think television now is the movies of before. Absolutely right. right? So that. yeah. that's not nothing yeah. new. Everyone talks so about if, that. Well, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. So my movie choices probably would be more in line with modern with the stuff on television. So now. let's just okay. So we're just talking. TV stuff, yeah. like kind of, we're on TV, not like Breaking Bad TV, right? Right. Like just right. not, uh, not that, not the Mr. golden Robot age quality. Because well, I mean, it really not. made a difference that that because yeah, we've talked about Ryan and I have talked about this, but there used to be only three fucking channels. Yeah. Yeah. And then Fox became a fourth network. But that and wasn't there even was some syndication, seven nights but, a week. <laughs> right. And yeah. I mean, I, I know the Fox network very well. Being on one of the original shows, but there wasn't that much programming. No, there really wasn't. But yet, you could turn on the TV and watch stuff. Yeah, it is ridiculous now. Well, because everything's narrow casted. Everything's built for very specific audiences. So when we were growing up, for better or worse, because some of it was garbage because they were trying to get it for everybody. But you got shows that appealed to on, on different levels. But more that's often. the time slots in the days. Yeah. So the eight o'clock show the kids could watch. The nine o'clock show for a sitcom or eight thirty, then it went up in like Spencer for Hire. Like I yeah. was asleep. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like I was. Uh, I'm, I can't even stay awake to watch oh, right. with my sweet, dad. Could you wait, sweet, watch Spencer for Hire? Not, not when you're like nine. Well, but you. Know, like, I was watching fucking Saturday Night Live. When yeah. I, was, like, fucking I started watching that in eighty five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I used to. I used to go to a kid's house on my little league team, and he loved SNL. I'd be like, Oh my god, I can't stay up this yeah. late. I'm yeah. so tired. Why are you? Because we were like this? twelve. I'm like, Oh my god. It's like cramming for a test. Yeah. Why would you do this? Then I was twelve with like a cramming over for a my test. Head, yeah. like going, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. Come on. Yeah. I remember Garrett Morris, yeah. baby. Now I remember where I felt that I was learning something cool or seeing something that I I never seen. I was probably twelve or thirteen, and you've been to this house, the one on the hill. Uh, and I had I actually had like a fourteen inch black and white television in Which my seems bedroom. Huge in my bedroom, but it didn't matter because I watched the Honeymooners. Yeah. At like eleven thirty yeah, at night, that was the right? Last thing I'd on. put that right up there. At the top. Yeah, and yeah, it's fucking genius. Yeah, and yeah. You're like, to this day, this is so funny, and this yeah. is done in the advent of. Um, yeah, go put on uh, go television. put on fucking Tim Allen's new show. Yeah, and then watch that for a half the, hour, and, and then, then watch put the on Honeymooners an episode yeah. of Honeymooners. Sure. Oh. Put on five minutes of the honeymoon. Yeah, you kill. Well, it started as every a sketch. Season. Now I actually remember the real thing. I was trying to think oh, of. I, it just came full circle at the end because oh, we're talking about original and we're talking about honeymooners. It has finally. It's finally. Arrived. Oh my god! It's. So, oh, I'm so relieved. <laughs> don't, so no, we don't want to lose it. When we switch, I kind of do. When yeah. we switch, <laughs> just forever. Well, then I'll just talk. You yeah. can go fuck yourself. <laughs> so when we switched on formats. Mr. President, which was formats. They brought in this guy. So it was an Ed Weidberger show, Johnny, like all these famous 70s, 80s sitcom writers, producers. And that was the problem of the show. They should have gotten like new blood. It would have been funny. But, and they like brought in this guy was. to direct, to <laughs> direct these episodes. And he was honestly probably one of the oldest men I'd ever met in my life. His name was Mark Daniels. But he was really cool and actually very knowledgeable. But I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. He fucking directed I Love Lucy. Yeah. He invented the He invented sitcom. Yeah. And but you're like, wait, what? What? And look, you grew up I Love Lucy. I mean, we all watch I Love Lucy about five times a week, even because it's, yeah. it's funny, because it's it was amazing. But this guy was so and I remember a scene. 
that I got schooled by this guy. Because I'm 14, I'm in teen magazines, I think I'm hot shit. And I'm sitting there doing a scene with George C. Scott and Eugene Roach. Who, if you don't know Eugene Roach, look him up. Funny yeah, shit. You will recognize him. Funny as shit. Yeah. And he's playing like the brother of George C. Scott from Wisconsin who's taking advantage of his brother being president and, the, like, uh, selling RVs or something. He's playing right? the Roger Clinton. <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> they, Roger Clinton probably stole his shtick That's a from good idea. <laughs> oh, I think I'll try that. But in this, in this, it's just this scene, and I remember it like it was yesterday, and we had this whole thing where, like, they're paying me this money to do the show, and, like, they're not writing anything, and I'm barely in it. So it's like you have these conversations. And... I'm doing this scene, and George C. Scott would mug a little bit. Yeah. But he's George C. Scott. And then Eugene Roach is funny anyway. And then, so I'm just trying to act, bounce off of these two guys. Mark Daniels, I don't think he's still around anymore. Um, If he is, he's like 135. (laughs) Oldest living man. (laughs) Oldest living director. He just directed... He directed Mr. Robot. He just directed Mr. Robot. (laughs) And uh, he calls me into the control booth. He'd be like, okay, we're editing last week's show. And I want to show you something. Like, this is a scene you have a lot of lines in. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, let me let me let me show you your camera. Three cameras, the whole camera's on you the whole time. He's like, see all that you're doing? I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, I'm reacting. I'm it's acting. funny. I'm acting. He goes, I can't use any of that. And I'm like, why? He's like, because you're making all these muggy reactions. You can't do that with a close up. I can't use any of this, and this is a great scene for you. You also have your hand down your pants. But I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. You also but have your other hand very, down George C. Scott's pants. But he had, but he had, <laughs> he had very soft old man hands, yes. so it was fine. But I was like, "Wait, what?" He's like, "I can't use any of the shots for you, this because it's just, it's just, you're, it's not working. You're too." Mu-. And like, and all I was doing was bouncing off these other two guys, yeah. and I'm like, "Oh well, damn." So I just got schooled. By this guy who I don't really understand the context of right. who he is at the time. He invented the fucking yeah, you sitcom. Got three years I understand, of acting I understand your segue now. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so back I was in the talking day, yeah. about something awesome. So then you. Uh, of back in, in the day of where things come. Yeah. So right, that so was just a good. Yeah, and it's Mark Daniels. Bless that. his soul. Yeah, what a cool yeah. dude. I got schooled that day. Yeah. That does not the same story of where I got motherfucked by George C. Scott on the set. Because you were rubbing his back asking about hardcore. No. (laughs) (laughs) So, George. I was like, so on the set of Taps, how was When you beat that man with the phone. No, I got dressed down. I got dressed down by George C. Scott in front of 50 people as a 14 year old uh, while we were doing single camera. And it was his close-up. So I'm standing like with my cheek next to the lens as the eye line. And apparently I was moving a little bit, like swaying back and forth. Uh, yeah. Oh, don't do that with George C. Scott. Nope, that's Patton, man. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I've, I, don't, I don't think I've ever been. And I've played for coaches and kind of yeah. hard. Nope, never been dressed down in yeah. front of 50 people like that before. But uh, that was long. But I learned my lesson. Yeah, I and he, the, the 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 thing is, he was absolutely right. So you can't say anything about it. But it's like... These are those things with those stories, He's like got with Matt. Has the lines in any film ever? George Name it, Scott. No, go. No, we'll <laughs> people have people write in. Time. Have people okay. write in. Yeah. So everybody write in. What is, is the best line of any movie of all time by George C. Scott? And the first one to get it, I will send them a free T-shirt. You're gonna send them one of your T. Okay, so the first person that writes in with the best line that Ryan is referencing by George C. Scott. In any movie, how how are we? Quick, any one of the best lines of any movie? Of no, 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 no. Of his best line that George C. Scott has ever said in a film is this: "Is this dot dot dot." The first person to write that in to our website, I will send them a free T-shirt that I have designed. That's a good deal. That's so either do deal. it, write it in at ryanandandre.com, or it's hello at ryanandandre.com, or tweet either Ryan and I at our Twitter handles, and be good. All right, well, I think that's kind of good, because we've actually gone pretty good. You Excellent. want to add anything? Is there something you missed, Ken? I'm good. I don't think I missed anything. Ken Reed, Boston, Massachusetts, yeah. hopefully from L.A., California soon. Someday. If we can talk his ass into moving here. That's right. 
Um, and then we can all hang out and do this on a regular yeah, basis. Yeah, I'll get my but, uh, my blue van and drive like Tony Danza to Connecticut. We can start a third podcast called just random shit <laughs> movies. <laughs> just let's talk about some dumbass bullshit. Yeah, that no one wants to hear. Isn't, isn't that what we do anyway? <laughs> the network. But we'll make our own digital channel. We'll get yeah. you know we'll get NBC to buy it or something. But. Uh, if you see Ken Reed's name on a show bill and a stand-up, go see him. Tell him say hi. You know, throw a drink at him or something. Uh, but uh, listen to his podcast. Plug your podcast. TV, TV Guidance Counselor. You can go to tvguidancecounselor.com or ikenreed.com because kenreed.com is taken by a conservative southern politician um, who I do get emails Master. for and I do answer them. Is there anything else you want to plug in your hometown when you get, uh, when you get back? I get shows up on I, I can read. com. If any, uh, if any of our fans are there. Yeah, if you're in the Boston area <laughs> uh, and you're not actively trying to get out. Or new episodes of uh, TV Guidance Counselors every Wednesday. Um, and I usually announce stuff on there. Thank Sweet. you, guys. Good. Awesome. And this is Squadcast. I'm Andre Gower. I'm Ryan Lambert. And we will maybe see you next time. Maybe next week. Mm, if I'm not... Too drunk. <laughs> and scene.